Everybody good? Everybody good? A couple breakouts under your, uh, under your belt here, a few more to go. Good content so far? Yeah, yeah? awesome. Awesome. So this is our journey to, uh, to DevOps, uh, made possible by uh, GitLab. So, all right. So who are we as a company? Uh, Jimworth is a financial services company. We specialize in insurance products. We sell life, long-term care, annuities, uh, mortgage insurance. Uh, so um, that's kind of our, our product portfolio, and that's what we specialize in, the emphasis being we're a financial services company, and that'll come into play here a little bit later. Um, so us personally, my name is Frank Ford. My title is Application Development Manager. Uh, I play more of an architect role uh, at the company. And Mark I'm Mark Downey. I'm Senior Manager of Application Development. Uh, I lead the web services team. I've been here for about seven years. Yeah. So I was originally hired as a Java developer about 13 years ago and have been there ever since. So uh, what we hope you're going to walk away with today is why we started with GitLab uh, as, a, as a product. Uh, and we're going to work from the, uh, our story is a, is a bottom-up story. You've heard a couple of top-down stories today from the, uh, from the keynotes. Uh, ours is a, a little bit different, and it was a grassroots movement that kind of became a, uh, an organization-wide thing. Um, kind of where are we today, and uh, where do we plan to take this uh, in the future? So, um, as I mentioned, we're a financial services company. Uh, that means we have to deal with a lot of regulation, and the long-term care insurance product that we sell is a health insurance product. So we have to deal with fun stuff like HIPAA, and if you're not familiar with what HIPAA is, that's the set of regulations that guard your private health information. Um, so we have, to, we have to deal with that on a, on a daily basis. Uh, not only that, we're in the process of, we're, we're a publicly traded company right now, we're in the process of being acquired by a foreign company uh, that has added a much higher level of scrutiny uh, to what we're doing uh, because that, that company is located in China. And so now we have government regulators uh, inside the office and they're, they're taking a look at what we're doing and we have to make sure that uh, uh, data is segregated and protected uh, accordingly. So our journey, well, we started, i just roll back the clock to about 2012. Um, we're, a hot, we're a heavy Java shop, and uh, we, had some, uh, we had some developers that were writing their code on their laptop uh, and, and doing some builds. But uh, we, had a, we, had a, we, called it, we had a homegrown build system. We called it AutoBuild. Um, and it, uh, basically, it was just a, a Linux box that had a Eclipse install on it and just ran in headless mode, uh, and it would run ant build jobs. And uh, our, our developers didn't really like interacting with it. And so they said, oh, well, this thing's just running Eclipse in headless mode, and I've got some ant builds, and they're checked into CVS, and so I'll just pull those down and put Eclipse on my laptop, and we were off to the races. They were doing their own thing, building their own stuff on their own uh, laptops, and this is the stuff, these are the build artifacts that are, you know, getting deployed to our environments and moving all the way up to production. Um, it wasn't really sustainable. We didn't know what was, you know, kind of being built, we couldn't, you know, we had a problem in production, how are we going to roll it back if you've deleted uh, the build artifacts off your, off your laptop already? Or, you know, let's think about the, the business continuity of this. All the code, all the intellectual property for the company is sitting on an individual's laptop. It's not checked into version control. Uh, they're just, you know, writing this stuff and, and, and doing it. It was, it was kind of like the Wild West. Um, so, uh, you know, I, if somebody puts that laptop on a car and the, the car drives away, I've seen this by the way, um, you know, you drive away and, and, and the laptop falls off and it gets hit by uh, another car or something like that, you know, and, and, you know, then death side comes in and they bring you this laptop, it's folded in half and, you know, they're like, well, what, what's going on with this thing? They say, well, it still turns on and, uh, you know, it's, it's funny, but it's really not because now how do we, how do we get that data back? Uh, and there isn't really any way to do it unless they were putting it in version control. So we all sat down as a team and we said, okay, how do we want to work? Uh, how, do we, how do we want to do this? Uh, and, and they mentioned Git, and they want to use Git. You know, they don't want to interact with CVS, they don't like the way that we're interacting with CVS, they don't like the, the build server that we're using. Uh, they wanted to use Git. So this is 2012, and being a financial services company, putting things outside of our organization is scary. So it's, it's really scary for us. So I, I knew we had to go on-prem. Uh, so I started looking around at, at what we have internally, and uh, we had an install of Stash. 
so I went to the team that was managing that that install stash and said, "Hey, can we come play in you know play in your uh, get the keys to this and, and come play?" And uh, they said, "No, we we have the small user license, and when you get to the bigger user license, it's very expensive, and you would put us over that limit, and we don't we don't want to do that." So I knew I needed a, a, an on-prem self-hosted solution, and it needed to be low cost, and that eventually steered me towards GitLab. And so I went ahead and spun up, uh, you know, requested a VM, spun up GitLab on a, uh, on a server, and uh, the development team loved it. I now had, you know, source that was in version control. It was all backed up, and everything was great. So, uh, so life was getting better. Um, and, then, uh, and then along came this guy and showed up at my desk one day and said, so I hear you have a or a, an install of Git somewhere. Yeah, so I, I talked to that same team that, that had the stash server, and they said, I, I think, I, you know, you can't come here. So I think Frank's spinning something up. So I went and talked to Frank and said, hey, uh, I've been looking at, you know, getting a CI pipeline put together. Um, at the time, it was before, uh, you know, GitLab had integrated CI. But I knew that I needed webhooks to, to call out to Jenkins. So I didn't want to pull the Jenkins server. That was a little inefficient. So I wanted Git. And so uh, led to this guy. Um, and so this, my team kind of embraced it. Uh, we moved all our CVS code over to Git. A um, little rocky at first. They were following the old tried and true habits of mm -hmm. keeping uh, all the development code in head. And, uh, and I said, no, 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 no. You know, master branch, that is, that is for your production code. So once we got that squared away, um, uh, the next step was uh, issues. So we had these post-it notes, um, so, you know, on a, on a whiteboard. And, uh, and that was fine for a while. We, we mm. moved them over, you know, we had, you know, stuff that was in the backlog, then we had started and then in progress. Um, and then, uh, and then uh, you know, we, we all of a sudden saw in GitLab, we were like, well, it has issues. Why don't we just mm -hmm. move them here? Uh, didn't have boards at the time. But, uh, but we still were able to put all that there and, and actually tie the code to the issues. It was, it was fantastic. You could link back and forth. Uh, and I'd say at, at that time, we had, uh, we had an install of Bugzilla that we were using for the issue tracking. And we'd written some custom stuff in there to link it back to CVS. And then... Uh, uh, that would break sometimes. Uh, there's a little, a little script that would have to be running on there to, to invoke it, and it would break periodically. And people would ping me and they'd say, "Hey, can you restart the thing, yeah. on the thing?" And you're like, "Oh, I, now I know what you mean. You mean that thing." Um, so, you know, it it, 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 all of this made life a whole lot better. Yeah, yeah. GitLab, it was all integrated. So that was great. Um, and and as uh, as new things came along, um, you know, we were, I was, I was kind of stumbling into this agile uh, like workflow it wasn't really uh, something that I ever said hey we need to do this um, kind of started because we're a very waterfall organization but um, you know being in the web services we never got any BRDs uh, you know the teams didn't think we needed it they just said you know you you go do this well, I was like well that that doesn't help I don't have any requirements um, and so they'd give me the BRD, and I'd say, there, there's nothing about my, my layer in here. You, you say the UI, and you say the database, but you want me to connect the dots. So um, that kind of led to, we said, OK, hey, why don't you guys just log into GitLab, put what you know into, into the, our issue tracking, and then we'll work from there. And so that began to be an iterative process of our developers you know, going back and saying, we need these things answered. Um, and, and at the time, we were developing a brand new application um, uh, to replace this aging application that had, uh, you know, 4,000 days of technical debt in, uh, in, in the Sonar Cube report. And we were like, e that needs to go away. Um, and so, you know, when we, when we created the, the new application, we said we followed all, all the processes um, that that we kind of that we kind of saw through GitLab, and it kind of was the genesis to um, to how we started to you know starting with GitFlow, 
um, and evolving into, um, you know, we followed it very religiously. Uh, and then we started taking, taking a look at, well, what else can GitLab do for us? And so LDAP kind of opened the door. We wanted, our developers didn't like managing multiple uh, Well, it, it, you know, it, 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 yeah, I, I, I didn't like managing folks logging into the system anyway. So we just went ahead and hooked it into AD, which required us at that time to, uh, to, to upgrade to the, the enterprise product. Um, which was great because it was uh, it was uh, we were able to put it on uh, on, on Mark's corporate card and uh, it was a small and, team. And it was only yeah, it was, know, a, it was a very few small team. Bucks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was great. So uh, yeah, we got away with that for you know a year and then yeah. uh, true up time came and it was, it was still under the limit. So I was we'll just yeah. run it but, through the card again. But during that time, word had started to get out and other folks had started to ask questions about hey, so I, I hear you have GitLab up and running and we would like to also migrate off of CVS. Um, so it kind of it kind of grew it kind of grew naturally. Yeah. Um, yeah, and at the at the same time, I was starting to see all of the new features coming to GitLab. Um, you know, this is about we're probably about five years ago now. CI came in, um, and and we're taking a look at our Jenkins scripts, and we're like, well, these these kind of break all the time. There's not a real good tie-in. We're managing 15 jobs for this one um, production pipeline. Um, this GitLab thing, we'll put it all in one script. Uh, we can see it. It's mm -hmm. checked into version control. We can, we can keep track of what changes are made to it. Um, and so that was great. And so then I started looking at every release notes <laughs> that came from GitLab. And I said, ooh, you know, that, that new feature, uh, that's, that's really going to start to shape my team. So we, we also we also like staying on top of this. So uh, very early on, we scripted it so that it would go ahead and upgrade itself. Uh, it would check once a week and, and automatically apply an upgrade if it if it found one. Um, and that's helped keep us uh, up to date with everything that, that GitLab has been uh, throwing out and allowed us to take advantage of new features as they come out instead of saying, oh well, we're eight versions behind and it's going to take us a little bit of effort to to upgrade to a new version. Uh, to use this new feature that came out that we want. So um, maintaining that, 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 so keeping yourself up to date is uh, it's a big thing. Yeah. Um, my team began using the milestones to track their sprints. So, uh, and, then, and then we said, okay, you know, you, you, wanna, you wanna release, let's, let's not put it three months out, let's not put it five months out, let's, let's just release once a month. Uh, and so we'll develop for two weeks and leave it in testing for mm -hmm. a couple of weeks and then release it to production. So what does that look like? You know, we started to shrink down to what we can complete in that two week cycle. And we really got, began to get an understanding of, uh, you know, how much work we can take on, how much is a, a safe amount of work to commit to. Um, and that fed back to the other teams who, you know, about this time, you know, we're seeing a lot more of uh, my team and, and what we could, Produce. Um, we released our application to production, uh, and it had much less. It's about a ninety percent reduction in the technical debt, so it went from four thousand to just a couple hundred. Um, and uh, you know, so then they started coming to GitLab. Um, so we we started begin we get, began at like ten users for the first year. Uh, today we're at four hundred and fifty users. Um, Larry, I got a true up that I got to do coming up. <laughs> um, you know, uh, and, and a couple other features that were that were key to to bringing people in were with the issue boards. The issue boards are great. Um, people love the visual Kanban type style and being able to make that uh, digital. Uh, you know, really really cleaned up a lot of our meeting rooms. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had a lot of meeting rooms that just had tape all over the walls mm -hmm. from where people had put the, you know, their, their cards at the, on there. Mm -hmm. um, well, making them digital kind of fixed that a lot. Yep. Uh, then the... Uh, Say, the, the, the last thing here is, uh, is Kubernetes. This and is the future state for is the, us. Yeah, this is, this, this is future state for us. Um, so we're, we're working with our infrastructure team to get uh, a Kubernetes environment up and running so that we can have GitLab uh, actually handle uh, this whole container thing for us. 
Um, that's kind of the that's kind of our holy grail is to to take that whole provisioning uh, thing away from our infrastructure group uh, and put that in the hands of the of the developer and say I need this much compute and let's go. It's a holy grail um, because yeah. we've had to fight the crusades to get here. Well, that and well, yeah, yeah, that and um, the other uh, the other aspect of this is because we are. Um, being acquired by that foreign company, uh, we've had to put a lot, a number of uh, a number of barriers in place between us and our infrastructure. And while they do a really good job of turning around, standing up traditional VMs, we can probably get one in about 48 hours. Um, this would remove that uh, that barrier as well. But that all has to be done. We can't pick up the phone and call them anymore. It all has to be done through tickets, and we have to communicate through the ticket. We can't actually communicate. Um, Using uh, using any type of instant messaging or, or voice or anything, it all has to be done through a through a ticket. Um, so uh, that 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 piece right there uh, is greatly going to speed up the the way that we can deliver stuff. So, uh, so you know, we wanted to leave you with some lessons that we learned along the way. Um, you know, things things that you know we either did wrong or things that that led us to where we were. Um, one is uh, being open to new ideas. Uh, listen, listening to your development team. You know they're saying, "Hey, we want we want to try these new things. We, mm -hmm. you know, we we're seeing these things uh, done in mm -hmm. you know." Don't just don't just brush them off. Don't just say, "Hey, this is the tool set that we have. This is the tool set that you're going to like. This is the tool set you're going to use." Uh, be open to trying out new things. Be open to to experimenting a little bit. Um, you know it, that's what led us to, to this, and, and you know, and now we have a, an almost nearly 500 user base uh, inside the company. Um, the, the other thing here is think about non-traditional use cases. Um, what are some ways to get your security team involved? Um, you know, at, right now we just had a meeting a couple weeks ago where our, our security group is is very very interested in uh, some of the new security features that GitLab is is bringing to the table. Uh, they think that. Um, you know that could actually we could retire a couple of other uh, security related products that we have uh, and stop paying maintenance on those and and uh, pay support for GitLab and, and it actually winds up being a cost savings to the company. Um, so it, it, you know think about that you know and everybody the buzz term DevSecOps it, it helps get you there. Uh, so uh, get your teams buy in before implementing change. Um, this was this was very important for my team. Um, mm -hmm. In, in going from the traditional style where they would pick up a ticket and work on it for a few months and implement a change. Uh, you know, I wanted to shrink them down to a couple weeks, but we had to do it over a number of steps, number of iterations. Um, and and in, in, in each block, uh, I made very incremental changes to make sure, hey, they, they can see the improvements that are happening. They can see the cycle times being reduced, they can see that their work is actually being appreciated because they didn't, you know, deliver it three months late. <laughs> um, so, as as you're implementing change, don't just don't try to just dump it all at, all at once. They're going to rebel. They're going to say, "Hey, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, what was wrong with the way we did it before?" Make small changes. Make um, say, "Hey, we're just going to move these things over here. It's still the same way, mm -hmm. you know, we always did it." And then you start to tweak things on them. Yeah. And playing off of that, um, stay the course. There's going to be distractions along the way. There's going to be bumps on the road. Um, just like you said, your, your team may push back on, well, we're making too many changes too rapidly. You know, listen to your team, get their buy-in, but, but stay the course. You know the end goal that you want to achieve. Um, make sure that you're, you're, you're dedicated to that and, uh, and, and make sure that you follow through with it. Uh, because, uh, as, as, as we can see right here, um, also don't get distracted by the baggage that you're going to have to carry forward. We have a lot of legacy stuff. Uh, that it, 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 right now, there's, there's no reason, there's, there's really no way for us to just rip it all down and start from scratch as much as we would like to do it. So there's things that we're going to have to carry forward. Don't, get, don't, let, that, don't let that become, oh, well, well, you know, we got to carry this legacy system forward. We, we, we don't need to do this. Yeah. You know, you know. You know, you, you know, work with it inside the, the, the confines of, uh, of GitLab and your CI CD process uh, and, and whatever methodology you want to use for development um, and, and, and make it work for you. There's, there's a, there is no one prescription for how to achieve this transformation. It's whatever works for your organization. Uh, so keep that in mind. We, and, and lastly here, you know, don't, don't let your day two items 
remain day two items. Um, we, uh, we, we, have a, we had a bad habit of uh, uh, kind of pulling some stuff towards that auto build box I mentioned a little bit earlier in the pitch. Uh, it was really just a bunch of, of ant jobs that, that built uh, ear and war files for us. And all we did was we just kind of lifted the land of those into Jenkins and said, yay, it's in Jenkins now. Um, it, it didn't really actually do much of anything. We, we need to go back in and fix that whole process. So. Um. So do we have any, uh, anybody have any questions that, uh, Larry? What you got? You mentioned something around your, your, your ticketing hey, system. Hey, Larry. What's the ticketing system that you... Can we use the mic for the questions? Thanks. You mentioned a ticketing system mm -hmm. to, to launch the, yep. the enhancement or what have you. Yep. What is the ticketing system that you're using, number one? Number two, what is the overall outcome that you have seen as a result of the transformation? What are the metrics that management has seen and the visibility, and what's the perception? Okay, I would say the, the ticketing system we're using is ServiceNow. It's ServiceNow. So, uh, you want to handle the uh, metrics piece of it? Is there integration that you guys have going in back into Not yet. Not yet. We're, we're looking into that, uh, trying to figure out how to integrate GitLab with ServiceNow so that we could have, like our folks in the, you know, when, it, when a trouble ticket comes in from uh, a customer service rep or somebody that's using any of our systems, uh, call into the help desk. The help desk could log a, a ServiceNow request, and then if that gets triaged and ultimately needs development support or, or IT support, uh, have that issue just feed on over to GitLab, create an issue inside of GitLab, and that's where the fingers on keyboard work actually gets done. Mm -hmm. So, um, Your metrics. Well, I'm not sure. I, I think I've gone over. Hmm? The outcome? The outcome, the outcome, the outcome has been has been great. Um, uh, Mark's team, again, like like I said, has stumbled into into using agile. We're not really using the term agile; it just kind of happened. Yeah. Um, and and he, you know, he's able to deliver stuff uh, much much faster than uh, than everybody. So the, the, there's there's still a, a set of group, or a set of teams inside the company that are using Waterfall, and they do big bang releases. Uh, and so you have to wait six months before you get your new feature. Uh, where um, we're, we're in the process of implementing a new CRM system right now, uh, and Mark's team has been able to, to help support uh, that effort by you know, adding data elements to web services and uh, do stuff, and he's been able to do that very, very quickly. Uh, and they've been very appreciative of the, uh, the, that level of support because they say, oh, well, we forgot this, this data element when we were scoping this service out, so we need to go ahead and get it back, and we don't want to wait six months to get that done. We need it in now, and his team's able to support that. Yeah. So. In, in the old application, we had um, you know, these 48-hour windows to, to deploy applications and two-hour planning meetings just to discuss the steps that are going to be done you know, over the weekend. Yeah. Um, you know that that all went away when we when we built our pipeline, um, and we can we can deploy code in ten minutes, um, and and nobody has any you know. There's no downtime. There's no uh, you know we're able to do a rolling restart, mm -hmm. and it's all automated. We don't have people getting in the way and uh, you know tripping tripping up the the works. Um, it's, works a lot better than. Than it used to. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> Any other questions? I see one in the back back there. Bring you the mic. Mm -hmm. Hi guys. A uh, question for you. You mentioned um, guy on the right. Mentioned he had to come to guy yeah. on the left. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> can't remember names. Mark. Right. Yep. Got it. <laughs> um, so you mentioned you came to him for CI help, right? Because he was using GitLab. What about CD? Where did that come into your pipeline? Was that CI CD that you were looking for, or was it just CI initially, and then CD was like an after effect? Yeah. Um, so, being a, being an insurance company, we always think about control for production, right? We don't want to hand over the keys. So, having a completely continuous delivery pipeline, um, you know, was probably not going to be accepted by senior management. Except we did it anyway. Um, <laughs> we we kind of built the pipeline, and then we then we have um, a step where it just waits for somebody to say okay. Uh, and in this case, it's that third party yeah. uh, entity that that administers our production environment. They get um, a, our our CI build, 
will send an email to an email eater. It'll get absorbed into their ServiceNow ticketing process. And within a couple minutes, somebody on that uh, team will just click the link and click OK Go. Uh, and, and it goes from there. So um, you know, while we, we have a CD uh, you know, in place, um, we've had to put in those, those manual steps to satisfy the, uh, some of the fears, some of the regulations that we have to put up with. And, mm -hmm.